Hey everybody, welcome to a new video. Today I'm going to show you how to use Scratch to make the old famous cup and ball game. Let's check it out. Mr. Jack, that's me, teaches you stuff. Um, so this is the classic game where there's three cups and there's a ball under, which, under one of them and you've got to guess which one has the ball. Um, so here's how it works, you click the reset button and then you can click to guess. Oh yeah, I got it right. And then you can click the ball. Um, usually you will not get it right. And so there's nothing there. So let's find out how to make it. Okay, so um, here's my game. And uh, I've got a bunch of different um, sprites that I've already put in. Um, and I'll, well, I'll go through how to code each of these things. But firstly, um, these are the sprites you will need if you wanna make it look the same as mine. Um, first, I've got the ball. The ball is a default uh, sprite, or at least it comes from the gallery. So if you just choose a sprite, sorry, choose a sprite, um, you will find it there just under ball. So you can just add that straight in. Uh, the button, for the reset button is also um, from the Scratch library. So that's button two right there. Um, so you can just click on that. Um, however, once you bring it in, I've added the word reset. So you just click on the button, go to costumes and add the word reset if that's what you want. You could also put start or shuffle or whatever you might want. And then the cup I had to draw myself and that's probably why it's the worst looking sprite out of all of this. Um, it's actually a little hard to do, but anyway, so I've got a sprite, I've uh, got a, a cup added in here um, and I've got to make three copies of that. I'm gonna hide it for now. So first, let's code the ball. So what we want the ball to do is to go to one of three places. We either want it to be here in the middle or maybe over here on the left, or maybe here on the right. So it's gotta to go to one of three places. And here's how we can code that. Let's start by going to uh, when flag clicked, and we want it to move. So we'll go to motion. Um, and we'll actually pick the go to location. I'm gonna put in here zero for X and minus 90 for the Y. Okay, so click the flag and it goes right there. So that should be in the middle pretty much and sort of halfway down or a bit more than halfway down the page. Okay, so that's our first location. So that's where we want it to be um, sometimes, but we also maybe want it to be over here and maybe over here. So let's just see what this location would be. If I was here, then that is roughly minus 140, okay? And then Y would be the same because um, Y axis is up and down, X is across. So minus 140 and the same for the Y. And over here, we could put it to 140. So positive 140, right? So we've got minus 140, zero, 140. Those are our three locations that we could put, potentially have the ball in. So um, because of those locations, we can actually use a random equation to do this. I'll show you how. So let's bring in random and let's also get a multiplier. Okay, and we'll show you what we're gonna do. So in the multiplier, I'm gonna type in on this side, 140, okay? And in here, I'm gonna use pick random, but not one to 10. I'm gonna do minus one to one. So let's first look at the pick random. So minus one to one, it's gonna choose a random number in between minus one to one. So there are three numbers in between there. There's minus one, zero, and one three possibilities. If we put it in here, then now one of those three numbers is gonna multiply by 140. So let's imagine minus one times 140, that will be minus 140. So the ball would go over here. Uh, if it happened to pick zero, zero times 140, well, that's zero, so it will end up in the zero position. And if it happens to pick one, then that's one times 140, so it will go to the 140 position. So that's how we'll get our three locations. So let's try that. And we're gonna drop this in, in place of X. Y will always be 90, minus 90, but X could be one of those three spots. Let's see if it works. So then click the flag. And every time I click the flag, it should go to one of those locations. Let's go through a bit quicker. And we can see that it's randomly jumping to one of those locations. So that is working out. However, we don't want it on the flag click, we actually want it on the button click. Um, so we've got a button here. So let's see what we gotta do to this button to make this work. And I click on the button, 
And uh, first thing is, if you actually look in the costumes of the button, you'll notice that it has a different color. And you can use that color for the click. So when it gets clicked, it temporarily ch uh, changes color, which just kind of helps people to, to realize that they've clicked it and they know that it's working. So let's um, set that up. So control, uh, sorry, events. Uh, when this sprite is clicked, I'm working in the button right now. When this sprite is clicked, looks, I'm gonna change my background. So switch costume to button to B, and then I wanna switch back to button to A. That might be a little bit fast. We can't even notice it. So let's put in a tiny little weight of say 0.1 seconds. Great, so now the button changes costume for a tiny little bit every time you click it. Perfect. But we also wanna make it um, move the ball around. So how do we do that? It's a little bit confusing because the code for the ball is obviously on the ball and then the button is separate. We can use a broadcast message. So broadcast message is basically that um, the, the button will send out a message to all the other sprites saying something. And if any of the other sprites hear that message, they do something. So um, I'm gonna broadcast the word start. You can make it any word, it doesn't really matter. But I'm gonna broadcast the word start. And then over on my ball, I'm gonna tell it to do this position changing when it hears the word start. So I'm gonna use that when I receive start. So now, if the ball, uh, if you click on the button, it will change its costume and then it will say start. And if the ball hears start, it'll change its position. So let's see if it works. And it's working just fine, so that's perfect. Every time I click this, the ball goes somewhere new. Great. Okay, but we need some cups to cover it over. So um, let's add in uh, our cups. Let's, uh, oops, sorry, I just need to unhide them. There it is. Okay, so here's my cup um, and I'm gonna need three of them and I have three. These three I've already actually put the code in but I'm gonna leave it there for temporarily. Um, and uh, I've just noticed that my ball is in front of my cups. It probably won't be that way because if you've done the ball first before the cups, it shouldn't, but I deleted some things. So um, I'm just gonna give it to go to the back layer um, whenever it hears the word start. So there we go. So it's now behind the cups. Okay, so let's go to the cup. So uh, a couple of things we want the cup to do. We want it to pretty much stay where it is, um, but then uh, when I click on it, I want it to kind of lift up and show what's underneath. Okay, so I'm gonna add in some code for that. So sprite one, and all it needs to know is when this sprite is clicked, go to uh, location, and we're gonna get it to glide. Um, so that's where it currently is, so I want it to go up to about Y10. Um, so click on that, and it glides up. It takes a little bit long, so I'm gonna make it a bit faster, 2.5. And I also make sure I need to add back in for it to reset, because once it's already up, it's already up. So I'm gonna have to have it reset. So let's listen for when it hears the word start, it's going to go back to where it's supposed to be to start with, which I think was about minus 45 or something like that. So let's see. Cool, so it resets, and when you click it, it lifts up. So let's do that for all of the cups. Here's my game. It's pretty much done. Uh, it, the basics are here at least. So every time I click reset, the ball will go to one of the positions and I can choose a cup to see if it's there. It's not. Now I found it. Okay. A couple of problems with mine is, I mean, there are no points. There's no real way to win the game. Um, it just relies on the player kind of guessing, I mean, doing it by themselves. And also you can lift multiple cups. Um, you can just keep clicking till you find the ball. Uh, that's not necessarily, you know, cheating or whatever, because there is no points anyway, but um, you might want to decide on a way of making the game where that doesn't happen. Um, it, it would be up to you. Uh, I'm gonna add a few little features here just for some fun. So I'll just skip through this and I'll show you what it ends up looking like at the end.
Okay, here's my modified version of the game now. I added a couple of features. So when I reset, it shuffles around. And then if you find the ball and click on the ball, it disappears and makes a little um, kind of collection sound. So I'll just really quickly show some of those features, um, but if you want to know exactly how to do that, you can go to my link to the Scratch game in the description and you can um, check it out for yourself on the inside. Uh, but basically what I've added here is um, when the sprite to the ball, when the sprite is clicked, it'll hide the ball and it'll play the sound magic spell. Uh, that just comes from the sound library here. Oops. That's the sound of magic spell, so that's a nice one. Um, and then also for the cups, um, I added some extra code to the reset button. So when you click the reset button first, it plays the sound shuffle. Um, uh, sorry, the, the message shuffle, it'll broadcast shuffle, which plays this sound chatter, which is that sound. Then it waits for a second and then it says start. Okay, so I've added in basically one second of time uh, for the shuffling to take place. Um, and so if you go to a cup, uh, you'll notice in the cup they now have an extra bit of code that says when receive shuffle, uh, go to their starting position and then there's a little repeat loop here where it will go to a random location um, uh, on the x-axis and then repeat that eight times. So it does that eight times, it just kind of jumps around to a random spot um, and then uh, after, after eight times It'll, it'll stop moving, but then that roughly works out to be when the one second is finished on uh, the thing where it says start and then everything goes back to the start position. So anyway, so that's the end of this tutorial. That's, uh, that's all I want to do with it. It'll be really cool to add more features like points, um, maybe a feature where it only allows you to lift up one cup and it maybe it gives you like a bum bum, but I'll let that up to the users. So good luck everybody and hope you, you come up with something really cool. See ya.